Welcome to Relax and Paint today. I'm going to share with you that we're going to take these multi-surface paints. Look at the labels. They're a little different, but they're all the same paint. Look for folk art, multi-surface. All right. These are two ounce bottles. They paint on multiple surfaces, glass, metal, ceramic. And what happens with these guys? You want to watch all the way to the end because we put the beauty on the last bit of this painting that we're going to do today. So I just wanted to say that. Please subscribe. If you like what's going on and like and check out our membership for YouTube, we have a Patreon and a YouTube membership. So yeah, and we need teachers out there. So if you'd like to become a teacher, make some extra income or just get really good at painting, go check out onestroke.com. All right. So we're going to do a landscape. Basically, we're going to use these colors and maybe a dark brown. We're going to use floating medium. And floating medium, people always say, what's that, ma'am? And so floating medium is also on our site. We use that instead of water, all right? Because it keeps it from getting um, muddy, okay? And it gives us the look that we need. So there's the floating medium. And I had some leftover greens that I'm going to use from a painting I was doing earlier. So there's some coffee latte and burnt umber. So that's going to be for the sandpiper. We're going to do us a little surprise at the end. And we're going to do our sky and our water with cobalt. And this is a blue peacock. I don't know if you can tell there. It's a little um, more gray tone. All right. So we're going to do a landscape. And I've left it in this pad. This is just an, a regular art watercolor art pad. Even though we're not doing watercolor, let me share with you how fun this ends up being. So I'm going to take floating medium and I'm going to just put some across here just to get me going. And so if you look at this, I don't know if you can see, it's a little shiny. All right. So we have to have a horizon. So my horizon is going, let's put some more on here and see if we can help this uh, stay really good here for us. All right. So I'm going to get some white and a little bit of cobalt. Okay. We're going to use the darker blue down and, and uh, the water. So I'm just going to brush it off and because watercolor lots of times just has it not a solid finish, not side to side covering the whole thing. So I'm going to just come in here and um, grab some white. Just put an extra white in here. All right. Teeny more, a little teeny bit more white. And you can put some gray tones. It looks like the sky sometimes has a little bit of gray. But I can add just a teeny bit of coffee latte in here. Just a teeny little bit. This makes for a pretty painting if you have these colors in your house. So that's the sky. Now, what happens is my horizon is going to be right in here. Okay. So what I want to do, sometimes you can blow dry this and put a piece of tape there. But what I like to do is come in here. I'm going to take off some of this white and I'm going to get medium and I'm going to come right in here. Right along there. Pick up the cobalt or medium. All right. So like I said, I don't want to end it like a straight line, uh, perfectly ended edge. But I'm going to put our horizon right in here. Now I'm going to get some medium. So I like make a wash out here and a wash out here. There we go. Okay. So now can you see the horizon? It's pretty strong there. Now the other thing I do is I can wash the brush and I can get medium again. And this is just a quick little project. I think you'll like it. So I just picked up white because back here in the sky, let's come on the edge and then we're gonna come right on top of this. Try to stay straight. Because if you have a hill there, it will look like a big wave that's coming, like a tsunami. 
because it's so far away. So you don't want to do that. So this is getting a little lumpy. So I'm going to try to do this quick before it gets too lumpy. All right. So now you can really see the horizon now. But that, that is straight. It's just the paper's warping up here. Okay. So it's easier if you do it up and down like I was doing it. And then I can come back and clean it up a little bit there. All right. So here's our, our um, blues down here. Okay. So the blue down in here, I have to have a lot of medium. See this? A lot of medium. I'm going to even have to get some more. You can use a real clean water if you want just to wet the paper because it's a... I am using watercolor paper, so if you're not, uh, you won't have as much dryness as this is pretty darn dry because it's the watercolor paper, which it wants to absorb water. But the medium works nice, so just use that first. Okay, so as I'm coming to shore a little bit, I'm going to pick up whites, okay, because it's going to get just a little bit lighter, okay? Now... What's going to happen now, I'm going to pick up white and I'm going to sputter it. So I'm going to lay this brush down, see how much white. So you can even hold the top of the brush like, and we're going to take and sputter it across. See how it looks like little waves, a little bit of sputtering. All right, but before I do more of those, I'm going to get the blue, the gray blue, which is the blue peacock, and you'll see the difference of it in just a minute. So I'm going to come right under here with the cobalt and that color, and that's going to have some waves over it, okay? And then we're going to come right under here a little bit more, all right? We're going to put white in here, and this is just a little bit more of waves that are going to be coming in here. Okay, so white's going to go over that. And then a little bit more blue here. So what's going to happen with that medium? We're going to go just like this with a floaty medium. Okay, let's work this in like that. All right, so then what I want to do is I want to come in with white and coffee latte. And that medium is over there too. And this is our sand. And this coffee latte, it makes a really pretty beach sand. Okay. So let's get white. And I'm just putting heavier white on here and not worrying about as much floating medium. Okay, so now what happens if I pick up more white and I just take this on, on the water like this? It looks like the um, water's coming in to the shore and I can use this big three, three quarter and I can put little bits of foam coming up from the out from the ocean back there. And see, I'm doing some more of that water. Oops, I didn't want a tan on there. I should have wiped that off because I didn't want that in there. So I want you to see how it just looks like kind of waves in there. But now we're going to come back and put more here. But before we do that, I want to do some sea oats over here. All right. So I'm going to take my uh, 12. And I'm going to come back in here and get some more medium. Okay, we have small two-ounce bottles, but the eight-ounce bottles are the best because we use it a lot, especially if you like that watercolor effect that I, I kind of like a lot. All right, so then this is what I'm doing. I'm going to take and tap in some greens, some sap. All right, and see how I'm tapping that all in there. 
we're going to put a sandpiper down in there so don't go away and then some, maybe some sailboats out there we'll see okay so i'm getting the medium i'm going to go back and forth now one thing that helps you is if you pick this up and you just use the chisel so and see it's touching the white wave and it gives you some nice looks in there okay now what i'm going to do next i'm going to put quite a few of those all right i'm going to use the two script liner because it's going to give you a really inky thin line so see the water and i make it inky all right, if you like some of these projects, we do more intense, longer, not too intense, but longer complete projects where I teach you more um, on our membership. So you get four classes for $9.99. So check those out. Four classes during the month, one a week. And I have practice strokes on Friday so you can learn how to use these different brushes if you've never used them before. All right, so I'm going to come in here and throw some white in there. Okay, a little bit more white in here, but this is I need then. Okay, so the, the chisel of that brush that we did first is nice, but look how much thinner these are. Okay. All right, so now what's going to happen? I'm letting this dry a little bit before I come in there. All right, so I'm going to do a little sandpiper. Okay, and there's one where its body is going this way. I don't know if you can see this. We'll try to come closer. All right, so that's the tummy. The tummy's right here. And then there's one where he's picking up shells or sea urchins down there. All right, and he's a stroke that's going up. All right, let me put it over here because I think you might see it better. There we go. See, it's just one stroke for the body. All right, and he's a bit bigger, so he's close to us, and that's just wicker white, and it's like a one-stroke leaf, all right? So then what I'm doing is I'm going to do, oh, I don't want to do that. I want to use coffee latte. All right, and that is the the wing on top. See this? And it goes to the tail. All right, so that's just straight coffee latte with a number two flat. So look, I'm going to push down and stand up. Okay, a little bit of a curve here. And right here, we're going to put a head there. So right now, this is just the wings on the back of the bird and then the tail. Okay, so see how cute that is. Now, what's going to happen? We are going to bring a little bit of this up for the head. Okay, and then the beak's going to go on top of that. So here's the head, and here's the head. So this one's a little bigger because he's closer. Then I'm going to take the burnt umber, and I'm going to make a beak. A little beak here and a beak on this one. Oh, I'm shaking. It's because these lights here, I think. There we go. All right. Now, when he's got that, they've got these little legs. There's one in the back and one in the front, and then little teeny, um, little teeny feet. This one can be in the water some. Okay, right down here, we've got one going this way and one going this way. Little teeny little feet, okay? All right, now I'm going to take this off. That's a good thing because we are on something that's already dried a little bit. And because we have a sealer in this paint, it's got a sealer in it. Then we can go back. See how I took off that leg that was too big? All right. And we're going to come right here for the tail. 
Okay. Now, what happens to these birds to make it look right is I'm going to just take the script liner and I can wet it just a teeny bit. There we are. Okay, roll your brush. All right. And besides the little beak, we're going to do little spots. We got the tail and a few little spots along the wing. Okay. His little sandpiper. Little spots. Now let's put a bird. We have a couple little birds in the sky. We're going to put a little eye in here. A little bit of an eye. Okay. And so let's way out here with our two. Let's get our two. All right, be sure to clean your brushes and take them out of the water as soon as you can so that it doesn't crack the handles. All right, so look, we're going to come back here and make a point, and that's a sail. They're way in the back. In the distance. All right, we'll have a couple of those. And then I want to do a bird. So this is a seagull. And what's going to happen is we have its body. And then we're going to come up with his wing. And his wing over here. And so we'll have his tail coming back there. All right, so what happens on him is we can use just a teeny bit of black. But what I'm going to do is put the dark brown right there. So that's going to give you the look where the seagull has this little tip on here. And it's got a tail back there. And it's got a beak. All right, so see, you can see that bird. And we're going to come here. Okay, so now what we want to do is go back in and put the rest of the waves. We have a couple of sailboats. So what happens with those? I'm going to just get a little bit of blue. And we put a little bit of blue under that. Just a little bit there. All right. Now, the important thing is putting these waves on here. So um, I'm going to pick up white across the back. And I'm going to just drag it across here and see when you drag it, it sputters it like foam. And then I'm going to take and lay it down so it gets a bigger drag across there, like the wave is crashing. All right. And then we have another row of it coming across here. Okay. Do you see that? That makes it kind of, you can see it rolling over. And then I'm going to just take a little bit on the corner and it splashes up some. So we want heavy white. And this mounds up a little bit here, right? Okay. And a little bit in here. So see how fun that is? And it was really pretty easy. And see how the water is coming in a little bit. And it runs over just slightly there and there. And a little bit more white in here. So I hope you enjoyed that this, this morning. And do a little a seascape. I think you'll enjoy how fun they are and you can make something that looks like pretty amazing, very quick. And this looks like it's waving. Remember, it's the paper that's wet. It is more straight than it looks and it's important that the horizon looks straight. And you can also put a little um, uh, sun in there, like a sunrise um, by putting a little bit of yellow. But if you enjoyed it, share what you paint and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.